Hello and welcome to the Broadhouse. In this video, I'll be polishing this piece of jasper I found at Swift Creek in Skagit County, Washington. And after polishing, I'll be using a microscope to examine some amazing jasper patterns. But first, let's polish this rock. After selecting the largest side, I start shaping the rock with a diamond-coated grinding drum on a 200 series Dremel. I am staying on low speed and using light to moderate pressure. If you're interested in any of the tools I'm using, we have links for everything in the description below. I think it's okay to move on to the second biggest side. For now I'm just working towards a rough shape. After I achieve that with all sides, I'll go back over the rock several times until I feel like it's ready for polishing. I like these nitrile gloves because they offer protection while still allowing me to feel for imperfections like uneven spots, cracks, or pits. I try to fix things as I find them and then grind down the surrounding areas to make sure the surface is even. If the imperfection is not very deep, sometimes I'll just hold the Dremel in place to work it down and then smooth the surrounding areas. Then I continue working until I'm satisfied with this side. A quick check for wear and then on to the third biggest side. Let's clean it up and check the progress. Remember, I'm still working towards the rough shape and I'll still be making several passes over the rock after that. But for now, I still have more work to do. Starting with the largest sides first simplifies the entire process because once these large sides are done, most of the rock shape is set. This allows the smaller sides to blend in more easily. So far I've spent one hour working on this rock and I'm almost done with the shaping process. This stage is what I call the rough shape. It has almost reached the final shape, but it still has some uneven areas and sharp edges that need to be worked down. For the sake of time, I'll just show one side at three times the speed, but I did spend another hour of shaping on this rock.
When I stopped to check my progress, I discovered this little chip here. I probably could have prevented this if I had been gentler on the red jasper, since it is prone to chipping. Well, no use crying over chip jasper. I'll just be more careful and apply only light pressure to fix it. That looks pretty good. To polish, I'll be using silicon carbide sanding discs and starting with my lowest grit, 60. Throughout the polishing process, I keep the speed low, apply light pressure, and keep the Dremel moving to prevent forcing sediment into the rock's surface. At the beginning of each new grit, there's a lot of sediment because the disc is smoothing and refining the surface. As I continue working through the grit, the surface becomes increasingly polished and the amount of sediment decreases because less material is being removed. I'll repeat this process for each side of the rock before moving on to the next stage. Between grits, I use a firm toothbrush to scrub away any leftover sediment, keeping the rock clean for the next grit, which is 80. Then 100. One fifty. Two forty. Four hundred. With time, I've realized that attaching the water drip to the bottom of the camera mount was a bad idea. It's often in the way, and I've lost a good amount of video because of it. Bear with me for two more grits, and then I'll solve this problem. For now, the next grit is 800. Still scrubbing between grits and then on to 1200. This is what I've been using for a water drip system, aquarium tubing, a Shasta bottle, and a self-watering plant spike I bought on Amazon. I had the drip valve attached to the bottom of this phone mount, but I moved it to an old tripod. This allows me to position the drip without affecting the camera's view. Let's see how it works with the next grit, 2000. This is so much better. You know, editing will be much easier now that I'm able to stay in the center of the frame. I'm satisfied with my solution, and now it's time for 3000. Five thousand. I'm still using low speed, light pressure, and constant movement so I'm not working sediment into the surface.
And now the final grit, 10,000. I'm almost done with this beautiful piece of jasper. I'm just giving it one final scrub with the toothbrush. I need it to be dry for the last step, so I'll leave it out overnight and then here it is. Other than chipping, I didn't really have any issues with this rock. I'd say it was six hours well spent. But so you know, I never finished a rock in one day. I always spread it out over several days. In total, I spent two hours and 20 minutes shaping and three hours and 30 minutes polishing. For the last step, I'm just going to apply a few drops of mineral oil and massage it in with a piece of denim. I usually always add more oil and then continue working it into the rock until it looks evenly coated. Besides enhancing the vibrancy and contrast of colors, Mineral oil minimizes the appearance of imperfections and acts as a barrier against moisture and other contaminants. After sitting untouched overnight, here is the polished jasper. There's pretty significant chipping on the red jasper. I'm not sure how I didn't notice this before. Clearly the black and green areas contain something that the red does not. And after looking at jasper's commonly associated minerals on mindat.org, magnetite seemed like a good place to start. The black color matches and it's easy to test for since it has a strong magnetic attraction. These neodymium magnets should be perfect. Well look at that. That is definitely a strong magnetic attraction. The green part is also magnetic, but slightly less so. And the red? Not at all. It would seem that the presence of magnetite is at least one reason why the green and black areas are so much tougher than the red. I'm happy with how this turned out. Jasper's broad variety of patterns, textures, and colors offer an endless selection of uniquely beautiful rocks. Because of this, it's one of my favorite types of rocks to look for and collect. Let's step outside and see how it looks. The colors are gorgeous in natural light, but it's a lot easier to see all of the damage. This makes me sad because it's clear I was being too rough during shaping. But learning comes with mistakes, and with this rock, I learned that magnetite reinforces jasper. Now I don't feel so bad. See, it's all about perspective. Speaking of perspectives, Let's head inside and check this out with the microscope. I'm coming in on a border where the calm of the green and black meets the chaos of what appears to be rivers of mineral soup. If you've been with us for a while, then you know that I am a self-taught hobbyist and the microscopic world of rocks and minerals is still new to me. So far I've looked at a few pieces of polished jasper with the microscope and its appearance varies greatly depending on its formation. Due to its obviously complicated geological history, this rock has many examples of just how diverse jasper can appear. This fine wavy pattern is one of my favorites. It almost looks like ripples in water. The green and black jasper has these large, angular, almost rectangular, reflective surfaces which, from what I'm noticing, are a key characteristic of polished jasper when viewed through a microscope. The bottom of the rock has many instances of this particular feature. The chipped areas look as you'd expect, but this one is neat because it contains chunks of magnetite. This piece, in particular, demonstrates magnetite's superior toughness compared to the brittleness of red jasper. Here's another one of jasper's polished microscopic appearances. Similar to the concentric ripples, except the edges look more like clouds.
This spot had me at a loss for words. It was difficult to hold still and maintain focus because all of this is located right here on this curve. This is the most complex and beautiful rock composition that I have ever seen so far. Let's take a moment to appreciate the Earth's chaotic yet masterful creation. Well, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks for hanging out, and please, subscribe to our channel.